going to hit record. Um, and I've also got the captions on if you need anything. Um, Drashti is here from London Arts and Health. Give us a wave, Drashti. <laughs> Thank you. And um, just pop in the chat to her if you, um, you know, if you miss something or if you, you know, want a link or anything, Drashti will be there just managing the chat. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. It's fantastic to have you all here for the Q&A. As I said, I'm Anna from London Arts and Health. I'm going to run through um, some slides in a second, basically, and just really walk through what this training, what this professional training opportunity is. Um, but I'll just hand over very briefly to Daniel and Sasha, who are going to introduce themselves and their organisation. So there's three of us working on this um, training, um, and they're going to just introduce themselves briefly. And Sasha, I think you're going to give us a bit of context for the Artists Represent Recovery Network as well. So Daniel, do you want to just say hi quickly? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Daniel from Arts and Health Hub. Um, we're an organisation that's dedicated to supporting freelance um, artists that are working in the creative health sector and we're one of the partners on this training programme. Okay. Hi, I'm Sasha Lee Cobb, and I'm the programme director at Raw Material, and we are a community music and creative arts centre based in Brixton. Uh, we work to support the creative and personal development of young people and adults, particularly those from um, disadvantaged and excluded vulnerable communities. And yeah, that's who we are on this project. <laughs> Ah, thanks, Sasha. Um, and the three organisations, like as we as I walk through the the slides, um, it will become clear like why we're doing this training. Um, but I think uh, Sasha, at raw material, you particularly picked up on um, issues around like diversity in the workforce, and this is something that us all of us as organisations feel really strongly about. So I wondered if you could just tell us a bit more about that. Yes, of course. I mean, um, for sometimes part of our work, we have a particular focus on um, mental health, basically. And for some time, um, Raw Material had been working um, with in partnership with South London and Maudsley um, Hospital and Trust, supporting um, people who were either on mental health wards or who had been released following a stay on a mental health ward, but using our creative programmes to support Support their well-being and their development so we were going both in towards settings but also providing a community service on 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 their discharge from hospital but what we noticed was two things really certainly in lambeth there's a kind of uh, over representation of black and minority um, ethnic groups in the mental health um, system, but there was also a, a low level of representation in terms of diversity in the practitioners who are going to provide um, support and deliver these um, creative health interventions. And so the idea for the ARN really was conceived in recognising this disparity and wanting not only to diversify um, the workforce um, operating within creative health settings and but to improve best practice particularly where it involves um, treatment and support of those um, communities because we're all aware of the different cultural and health iniquities that exist and so this is by way of trying to um, address that situation increase the diversity and improve the levels of practice that are targeted at those communities so that's how that really came about so yeah fantastic thank you sasha so i'm going to share my screen and tell you a bit more about the program and some of the processes in applying if you have a question pop it in the chat we'll kind of get to a Q&A towards the end of the session. So maybe Daniel, Sasha and I are gonna share for sort of 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll just open the floor to any questions or queries, and we'll absolutely do our best to try and answer those. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully this is okay. Um, oh. Is that working? I, don't, I feel like that's not really working properly. Let me try again. <laughs> There we go. Hopefully everyone can see that. That's okay, great, okay. So I'm gonna tell you a bit about the Artists Represent Recovery Network and there is quite a lot of text on some of these slides. So I apologize, but all of this information is on the web page. So you can go and read that at your leisure. 
Also, if you um, need any assistance with application or understanding any of the program, just email us. Drashti will put our info email address in the chat. So you can have a chat with Drashti and myself at any point during the application process if you need assistance or help with that. Um, so the Artists Represent Recovery Network um, is a project that's run, it's a professional development training that's run by these three organizations. We've all introduced ourselves. Um, and London Arts and Health, I'll just say very briefly, we are um, an Arts Council funded sector support organization. So we exist to support um, anyone working across arts and health in London. And we do that in a variety of ways through trainings, through our newsletter, um, through comms, through a festival of creative health every year. So we, um, yeah, we do lots and lots of different things and you can find out more on our website. Um, the project is funded by the Arts Council, by the Bering Foundation and by the GLA, Greater London Authority. So there's three kind of core funders on this project. Um, and they are all really brilliant funders. They're really committed to um, diversification of the sector and really supporting in particular freelance artist practitioners working across arts and health. Um, so uh, the program is in its second iteration. So we've run one cohort already, which was really, really fantastic. We had lots of learnings, um, a really brilliant experience working with a cohort of 10 artists and that ended last year. And we feel really lucky to be able to be refunded to support another 10 artists through this professional development program. Um, and a, a note on that as well. So the program is really specifically for people who identify as freelance workers, and ethnically diverse artist practitioners based in London. But we're also really open to your art form. Some people as well don't really identify as working in arts and health or creative health. They might use terms like participatory artists or they work in a community setting or they're a socially engaged practitioner. We welcome all of that. So if you have those kinds of um, maybe community facing practices and you're really um, looking to upskill in creative health, in arts and health, this is definitely a training for you. So please feel free and welcome to apply. And we've had lots of different artists with lots of different types of practices from spoken word, theatre, um, visual arts, photography and everything in between. So um, we're really not limiting, um, you know, by art form in any way. Um, so the training is um, aimed really at artists with at least three years of experience. Um, and we're quite specific about that. And that really is um, just to acknowledge that when you're doing this training, it can um, sometimes talking about these things, learning about this, this area can be kind of triggering. Um, also, when you're going on placement, you might be working with participants who are quite vulnerable, who are um, experiencing ill mental health. So we really want artists who have their feet under the table a little bit. They've had some lived experience. They've had some life experience um, and they're able to maybe kind of manage and hold some of those things. And that's why we specify really um, that uh, artists need to have a bit of a, a bit of experience essentially in the field. So the training um, will start in January next year, and it's a mix of online and in-person um, sessions. And we're going to talk a bit more in detail about what those might comprise. And also it's a paid training. So we really recognize and acknowledge and we're really firm with our funders as well that this is work. Um, that your time must be remunerated. Also, uh, our cohort are freelancers. So if you're training, you're unable to work. So we really make sure that for the key elements, you are remunerated for this and that you can also apply for seed money. So people who complete the program can uh, receive up to £1,700. And that might be for a project um, that you want to you know, trial out yourself. It might be for the uh, further development of your practice for materials, artistic materials, whatever it is that you feel like will really further your, your practice and your, your journey and your career, we welcome all of that. Um, so we've talked a bit about ourselves. Um, there are three partners delivering this training um, at London Arts and Health with a grant holder. So we will be paying your invoices, making sure that the cohort are paid in a timely manner. Um, and we're really excited this time as well because we were able to secure a little bit more funding to have a project manager um, and an evaluator, which we think is really important to continue to show um, really the, the deep value of this kind of professional development training. Um, and then Daniel um, is very much leading on the program design. Um, Daniel is one of the co-facilitators and he's going to introduce himself in a second. 
Um, and Sasha and Raw Material are really fantastic organisation and they will be leading particularly on the relationship with South London and Maudsley um, and sort of supporting artists working on placement. So I'll talk very um, briefly about the offer. So what is this professional development training? Um, well, the first thing that you will receive are six in-person um, half-day training. So this is where the cohort physically comes together in person at Raw Material. You are remunerated at £150 for half a day. And that is with Jide Ashimi, who's uh, one of the other facilitators on the project, and Daniel. And four of these sessions will also include visiting artists. So um, Daniel's going to chat a little bit about this next, but we have really, really fantastic um, diverse artists who are just excellent at their practice, excellent in the sector, and they will come and do really, really practical kind of um, in-person trainings. We also have seven hours of online training, which sounds like a lot, but it'd be kind of chunked up into maybe one or two hour sessions. And we felt like this was really important. This is a bit different actually from the first time we ran this professional development training, but the online trainings will be really sort of specific around what does it mean to be a freelance practitioner? So there might be sessions looking at things like evaluation or funding, like how do I actually get funding? How do I build partnerships? So there'll be really practical, tangible uh, online trainings around topics like that. You will also be paid £200 a day for two days to go on placement. So we have five placement hosts that we're scoping. Um, Raw Material and Slam will be one of those hosts, but we will offer a range of different kinds of placements um, next year. And that really reflects, I think, the kind of broad diversity of the type of work that's happening in creative health. So um, they might be with organizations, for example, like Breathe Arts Health Research, who deliver a singing project for mums and dads, um, and that's around postnatal depression and kind of mental health and sort of early years work. So we'll be offering like a real broad range and scope of placements, but that is such an exciting part of the training uh, where you get to go and experience that. And you will also have access to um, mentors. So we have uh, mentors from returning from our first cohort and also from broader from the sector. And they will be really informal places where you can like network and make those connections to support your practice and the development of your practice. And as we said, if you complete the program, you can also receive seed money. Um, and artists before have commented that that's like really, really helpful to kind of have that injection of cash and to bring projects into reality. And we've seen a really broad range of things happening and being kind of catalyzed with that seed money. I'm gonna hand over to Daniel and I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, Daniel and Gide lead on the training and the delivery of that training. So Daniel, I don't know if you can just tell us a bit more about that. Absolutely. Um, so I'm really excited for us to be running the second round of this paid training, uh, particularly because as an artist of colour working across lots of different roles in this sector, I am acutely aware of the lack of ethnic diversity in the workforce. And so I'm really deeply passionate about this opportunity to upskill and support artists of colour that are working in creative health. Um, as Anna mentioned, my role is to design the programme of training, as well as co-facilitating the sessions alongside Jide, um, who is the um, chair of raw material and a mental health professional working across the South London and Maudsley Mental Health Trust. Um, Anna mentioned that we have six in-person half-day sessions, four of which have visiting artists and specialists, and then four shorter online training sessions. And the sessions focus on a mixture of professional development alongside considering how you take care of yourself as an artist working in this sometimes challenging field. The training focuses on themes such as taking stock of where you're at with your creative practice. Um, as Anna mentioned, we ask that you already have some experience, but we might want to start off thinking about where are you at now and thinking about a roadmap for where you want to be heading in the coming years for your creative practice. Um, we'll support you to develop and deliver participatory arts programs for marginalized groups that are often underrepresented. Um, we'll be thinking and looking at um, how the brain works and how the nervous system works and developing tools to build resilience when working in challenging environments. 
and thinking about how we design creative sessions to be delivered within specific creative health environments. So as Anna mentioned, and um, particularly through raw material, there's the possibility to be working on mental health wards. Um, and through that training, we also have insights from artists with experience. So possibly bringing back an artist from the previous cohort who's been through that particular programme and also getting support from an occupational therapist who supports this kind of work in hospital settings. Um, and then those shorter online sessions will focus on more practical things around freelancing, which could be around sourcing funding and, and tips on how to write applications. Where possible, the focus in the training sessions is really through experiential learning. So um, we want to have plenty of time for you to be doing and thinking and lots of discussion and asking questions. So less just sitting and receiving information, but learning through doing. And this programme is a really fantastic opportunity to gain a range of knowledge, skills and practical experience from industry professionals, including your other peers, um, that will bring no doubt a wealth of knowledge and insight to be shared um, with the group. And the value of engaging in this programme, if, if you were paying, would be thousands of pounds. So thank you to our funders for securing the opportunity for us to pay people to attend this training, something that is incredibly rare. And we're really excited. <laughs> a diverse cohort of engaged creatives so if there's any questions that you have about the um the program in terms of the types of sessions that we run or how they might run please do pop them in the chat or we can answer them in the more open q a at the end of the session thanks amazing thank you daniel um i'm just going to go back and uh i've got a few more slides and then we can kind of open up for any questions from the group um, so in terms of eligibility for applying, um, Daniel's touched on this as well. Um, we are really looking for people who are 25 plus and have that kind of three years of evidence. Um, that's a very strong word, evidence, but that you have a kind of track record of working um, in arts or health um, or kind of community, socially engaged practice. Obviously, you must be a practitioner that identifies as being from an ethnically diverse cultural background. Um, and a freelance practitioner um, or artist. And that, again, we really recognise that our freelance colleagues often just don't get any training. You know, if you're employed, even if you're um, employed part time, you might have more opportunity to kind of access training or CPD. So we're really trying to support our freelance practitioners. Um, we also, because the Arts Council is one of our funders, in London, they have um, what's called priority places. So Brent, Barking and Dag, Croydon, Enfield and Newham. So we, um, I think in the previous cohort, we maybe had two artists, two or three artists that were from those priority places. And we will um, be looking, um, obviously any, for anyone from anywhere in London can apply, but we will try and prioritize um, at least three places for those priority places due to the nature of our funding from Arts Council. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. So that's the eligibility criteria. Um, again, lots of words on the screen, um, but we wanted to be really transparent about the programme dates, just so that people are really, really aware and conscious like when you're applying. And we've actually had a couple of email queries already where people are like, oh, I'm away for two months. I'm going to miss lots of the sessions. Can I still apply? And the answer is probably not, because that might take away from someone who can actually really fully engage in all of the dates. Um, we are, I think, going to deliver the in-person training at Raw Material in Brixton in South London. And the set, the in-person sessions will probably be like an afternoon um, session, sort of after lunch, one till five, something like that. The online sessions, again, probably in the afternoon, but there might be a bit of change and flexibility around that to you know, make sure it works for G Day and Daniel and also the cohort. The placement dates will vary. I'm actually going to hand over to Sasha um, just for a few minutes to talk about the nature of the placements and maybe what to expect and what happened last time. Um, and they are really, really exciting. It's like a really, really brilliant part of this training. Um, but again, those will be confirmed as, you know, as the cohort kind of learns together, trains together, and we, we work those out as we go along to make sure that they really suit the artists. Um, Sasha, I don't know if you could just share a bit more about the placements for a few minutes. 
I can, I can. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically, as Daniel has already alluded to, um, the value of these professional placements and an opportunity for you to sort of develop your um, practice in a real context can't be understated. And um, I know hopefully this year we'll be having a broader range of healthcare settings in which we'll be able to place you in but just to give you an example last year in our uh, first phase we worked largely with the Bethlehem and Maudsley hospitals across a number of wards and the types of um, placement wards people were um, participants on the program were allocated to including um, adolescent intensive care units for young people experiencing acute mental health crises, crises um, age 12 12 to 18 who maybe had been sectioned, children's units for younger children from 4 to 13 with established mental health um, disorders, maybe eating disorders, uh, neurodiversity um, conditions, uh, development disorders, that kind of things. We also worked across a number of adult wards, including a medium secure unit um, with for male and females, largely with um, individuals who are experiencing maybe some kind of psychosis, um, but who needed that extra um, security in a setting, maybe due to um, the nature of their illness, which means they'd been participating in maybe violent activities, etc. And then um, we had um, more mixed um, wards based at Maudsley, some for men, and it was just a mix a complex mix of um, disorders so it really depends on which ward and um, location you're based but there is lots of variety in terms of who you could work with in terms of age groups and also the um, type of health conditions that you'll be working alongside and um, we did we had the program is open to artists from lots of different um, formats, um, art forms, etc. And last year we had a number and that was represented in what they delivered. So um, people delivered a mix of um, poetry and photography workshops, working in pairs, um, that's something they delivered. It could be collage writing, it could be lyric writing, sound, music, printing, using nature. Um, but a lot of that was tailored following visits. So um, what will happen once the um, placements have placement settings have been identified and confirmed this information will be shared to you and where it is possible we do try and match people with their area of in interest it does depend though so we can't guarantee that um, but we do try and work with that and then once you've um, selected someone who you can work with um, as your pair because they are paired placements and you'll have time to do that through um, the previous sessions to get to know everybody we, we then look at placing you we then can set dates for the placements but importantly during the planning process you'll get an opportunity to go and have a site visit and meet key personnel in that healthcare setting where you'll be able to talk through your initial plans where you'll be able to find out about the particular patient client group that you'd be working with what the needs their needs are and what and establish an aim and objective um, for your sessions um, we found last year that a lot of our, our program participants got quite concerned about whether the, what to plan, whether they'd be planning the right types of thing. But don't worry, you'll definitely, once um, those placements have been identified, you'll definitely get an opportunity to think these through. Um, so you'll go on site visits, you'll talk about anything around risk management, health and safety, understanding, you know, the processes and procedures and requirements for the area that you work in. And then you can go off you'll have time to go off and plan in your peers is the act the exact um, sessions that you're going to deliver you'll get to deliver two sessions and the sessions you won't be um the sessions will be paid at 200 pound each including any planning which also includes any site visits but you won't be delivering expected to be delivering a whole day more than likely you'll be delivering for up to an hour and a half with half an hour at the beginning to maybe set up and also have a debrief a briefing with um, staff who you're working with in that setting and the same at the end so it's likely to be about a uh, 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 one and a half hour 90 minute delivery with time for planning and debrief and etc either side um, 
those visits, looting back to the visits, you can also, um, you'll have to think about what resources that you'll need. But again, the visits will inform that and you'll have time to pull that together or speak with the, the setting um, to see what resources they can help support you with that. Um, two key things that um, I would say around that, because of the nature of the wards, and particularly where it is a mental health ward, you would need um, a DBS and you'd also need public liability, um, which some of you probably already have as part of your practice. But um, the program manager will be able to sort of advise and guide and support you as to um, how to make sure that that happens in good time. Uh, one thing I would say, what our last year the um, participant found with the particular wards we were working on is to prepare to be flexible and prepare for anything because as you can imagine um, working in healthcare settings lots of things are subject to change um, from the participants to the date when you may need to deliver because of something that might have happened in that setting at short notice um, but you know you'll have a fantastic time um you know everyone who came back found it really fulfilling it gave them that great insight that and confidence that they needed in their practice and you know they were able to connect and better understand those healthcare settings so um yeah it will be fab and i'm going to stop there amazing thank you sasha and i'm sure there might be some more questions um so I can see there's some things in the chat as well, which I'll talk through in a second, but I've just got a couple more slides to share about uh, the application process. So I'll just finish that off and then we can go to questions. Um, so yeah, how do you apply? Um, it's hopefully pretty straightforward. And again, Drashti, if you could just put these individual links, that would be really helpful. Um, again, they're all on the web page. So you just have to become a free member of London Arts and Health, um, which hopefully will be a useful thing for you as well. If you're a member, you, you get our newsletter, you get to attend our events for free and obviously sign up to apply for this training. And once you filled in um, your membership, you just go to the job form again that's linked on the page and that's pretty straightforward it really just asks a few questions about what is the value of this training for you and to tell us a bit about your art form um and uh yeah why you want to undertake this training tell us a bit about yourself if you need support and there's been a question around this yes we do have a bit of access budget for example if you um need uh support to fill um either of those forms in. And also if you'd prefer to submit your application in a different way, I think we've already had someone apply um, just filling in a kind of Word document of the questions. You can also record yourself or do an audio recording answering the questions. And um, we do just ask that you join our membership and that you um, complete the job form in some form and you can email that to us or just complete the form. So again, whatever is comfortable for you and we are also here as a team to help you and support you in your application. Um, again, loads of text on this slide, but I just wanted to be really clear. Um, applications close at 5 p.m. on the 10th of November. So there's still like quite a lot of time to get your application in. And then between the 11th to the 24th of November, um, the partner organizations shortlist. And what we do is we will shortlist to 20 candidates and they will be invited to an in-person workshop because this is a cohort that's going to be training for um, quite a number of months together. And it is about building your network, building your connections. We're really looking for people who want to work with other people and want to kind of be in that environment where they're supportive to each other. So we invite candidates. It's You don't have to prepare anything just come and enjoy the workshop with Daniel and GJ and kind of meet the team and also see if that training is right for you as well. Um, we then make our decision pretty quickly and um, we will uh, announce that just before Christmas. So um, very busy up till Christmas. Um, but yeah, that's just the kind of key dates just to be really transparent so people um, know and understand that process. And as I said, if you have any queries about that, please do email us and the team will get back to you. I'm just gonna stop sharing. Um, I can see there's like lots of activity in the chat. Um, and uh, yes, people have asked for a Word document. That's absolutely fine. Um, Ariel asks, so Sasha, this is a question for you. How many visits is required to get a sense of what kind of program to organize? And Sasha, you said one site visit. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I mean, one, 
most people did one visit and that should suffice but what happens is once your um, pairings and your placement location is confirmed um, there's, there will be a contact at the placement location and so if there is further need of exchange of information or clarification of points that can happen we found that one visit um, should be okay but um, subject to availability i'm sure there's flexibility um, if it's deemed that you need more so yeah should be a problem <laughs> fantastic um uh, someone had a question about i work a lot in newham but i live in hackney um yeah i mean apply please apply obviously hackney is like where your address is so you'd have to put that in the form but um you know we're always looking to support artists um from the priority areas for arts council but sometimes we just don't get any applications from those priority areas um but please please do apply we really welcome your application and someone's asking for the word document we don't have that on the page but we can email that to you separately so just make sure that we have your email address and we can provide the questions as a word document are there any other questions or queries at this stage that the team can help anyone with? Please do come off camera and ask anything. <laughs> Anna, do you need to change the settings for people to be able to unmute or is that already there? Um, oh. I'll, yeah. I'll change it. Amma's got her hand up. Yeah, Amma, go for it. You should be able to unmute now, Amma. You should be able to. Hey, there we go. Thank you. Um, so far, this has been super helpful. So thank you very much, everyone who's offered information just to give us some insight into this opportunity. Um, I just wanted to ask, Sasha, you mentioned various art forms in your examples when you were speaking about the placements. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, I know you can't mention all of them. And <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to check. I work predominantly with dance as my art form. I work with a couple of others, but that's my predominant way of working. And I just wanted to check whether that is an art form that can still be applied in some of the placement settings, because the examples you gave were all kind of quite static, almost like ways of working with art. And I just wondered if that there was kind of scope for that as an art form in within the process or not. I, I would imagine so. I mean, that's Basically, the examples I quote you are based on the artist and their art form in particular and what having selected um, their placement location, what they discussed and decided to develop. Um, I could only see that being an issue where the placement was in a space where there wasn't sufficient space or whether uh, the particular client group for whatever reason couldn't engage in some movement. With all the placements, you would have to sort of consider um, tailoring it to to the needs, the context that you're in. But yeah, of course. there's no reason that I'm aware of at this point in time, which would mean that I would be able to say, no, it's an absolute no, no, we can't do dance, you know, all art forms are welcome. And, you know, dance is as therapeutic and supportive of people's well being as any other art form. So it would only be, I think, maybe logistical and uh, maybe physical barriers that might prevent that. But I can't see that being the case because the whole idea of this practice is to, to explore that and look at how things can, your art can be tailored, your practice can be tailored to support that well being and what you can introduce so that would be quite interesting actually to be able to sort of like say okay i'm working with this group um how can i apply my art to make sure i'm supporting them and their needs in this context so, yeah great thank you um olu asks could you give some examples of what you mean by the program being for people already working in creative health and community settings as opposed to for people looking to gain experience in these areas, please. Thanks. Um, Daniel, I wonder if you could respond to that actually. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, evidence in your in your application, the kind of experience that you already have, and that might be that you already deliver participatory projects through whatever art form, 
as Sasha said, all art forms are welcome, but where there is a focus on the health benefits or the well-being benefits of your creative practice. Um, I think when we were initially thinking about this training, we were acknowledging that often there's lots of training out there for artists that are just starting out and support for, for new graduates, but less support as people progress through their careers, but still you know, benefiting and needing access to training. So I think just make really clear in your application the experience that you have, even if that includes, you know, talking about specific examples, um, specific different types of examples. So it might be that your creative practice has a participatory element. It might be that you also work with mental health trusts producing work for exhibitions, but where the health and well-being aspect is sort of woven through the work that you do. So this is less about supporting people that are just stepping into this particular field and sector, but people that already have a level of experience, and we're saying at least three years experience of working across the arts and health sector. Thank you. Got a thumbs up, Daniels. I think that was a really right. good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Melissa, you've got your hands up. Oh, I think you're on mute. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, uh, just really useful so far. And I'm, I'm so excited by this prospect. Um, I, I think this has kind of been asked in when somebody else has asked about the area that they're in but nonetheless I'm just going to clarify given I'm in the borough of Kingston upon Thames um is it uh, am I limited or um is it still okay to apply because you know being in the borough that I'm in one of my constant concerns is that it's really difficult certainly in my borough and some of the surrounding boroughs to reach um uh, uh, people from black cultures or from or other people of color in the projects the singing projects that I run so is that um, um am I limited or restricted in applying because of the borough that I'm in in any way no I don't think so at all um and the the purpose of this like training um is about building your network and working in maybe different areas of London working with artists who work in different places in London so that like it's really not a limit basically as long as your address is in London you can apply um and yeah I feel like there's actually lots of um anecdotally like we should have a chat because there is there's like some really interesting projects kind of happening in southwest London and um Kingston oh, and King yeah <laughs> So I think that that sounds fantastic and it's great to meet an artist from Kingston. So yeah, please do apply. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I'd love to know what there is because I don't know anything. <laughs> um, drop me an email, drop me an email to the info address and yeah, let's have a chat. Um, I'm just noticing there's a, a couple of questions about working in pairs. Um, so the workshops will be essentially when you're on placement, you don't go on your placement by yourself, you go in pairs. And that, it sounds a bit like we're being a bit woolly about it, but basically as you get to know the cohort and you figure out who you like to work with as well, because that's really important, it is about chemistry. Like, can I work with this person? Do we have like shared ideals? Do we have maybe different art forms or complementary art forms that will be decided by the cohort? So you will go in pairs and sort of devise um, those workshops um, and deliver those together. So you won't be alone on your placement. And that's just so that there's some solidarity that you're not just kind of out there isolated doing it by yourself so you will go in pairs so um I hope that answers that question um and Ariel says is the aim of this fund to create long-term partnerships between freelancers and healthcare providers if so will this training provide a form of certification to add to our CVs that's a really good question um it's not like a formal training in the sense of getting a, a master's or a postgraduate or something but it is a kind of professional development um you certainly can add it to your cvs and what we found in our previous cohort is that lots of connections and relationships were made and brokered so often artists 
um, went on and delivered at conferences. They came back and ran workshops at London Arts and Health. They went and worked more with raw material. Like it really, um, it was really useful in kind of expanding our networks and also your networks as a cohort. And the, and the often uh, a lot of the cohort continued to kind of work together and like deliver and develop projects and so on. So it's about as, as much as um, having that kind of professional training, but also building your network and who you're collaborating with in London. And just to say, you know, off the back of that, if you're making an application, you know, think about what is it that you want to get from this training, because there will be 10 beautifully, wonderful, unique artists um, in this training that will all want different things from it. And so we try to provide, um, you know, a real diverse mix of the training so that on the job learning, the mentoring aspect, um, the sort of peer to peer aspect, because two of those sessions, two of those six in-person sessions won't have visitors. And that will be a chance for us to share knowledge between each other. Then you've got those visiting artists and specialists. So make it really clear, what, what do you want to get from the training? You know, How would it be helpful to you? Um, because not everybody will want the same thing. So try to you know make it your own. Wow, thank you, Daniel. Um, we've also had a question, Ariel says thank you, um, about the placement partners. Yeah, so that's a great question. So obviously SLAM is a um, kind of confirmed partner and we work with them really intensely in the first cohort. What we wanted to do actually for this second round of training is sort of diversify some of those partners to really recognize that London is, um, you know, it's a, a hugely wonderful ecosystem of creative health with loads of different types of organizations doing different kinds of work. So we've done some scoping with potential partners. They might include places like Arts Network, um, Hospital Rooms, Breathe Arts Health Research, Thrive London, like different kinds of partners. Um, but those aren't locked down at the moment. We're still kind of exploring that and making sure that they also fit the cohort and that they also are running projects at a, in a kind of timely manner for when the cohort wants to go on placement. Because obviously some, some partners might have projects live or you know they might not have projects live. So we just need to make sure that works. But they will be a really interesting mix of different kinds of organizations working in different types of settings as well so that um, the cohort can have yeah different placement experiences. And there's another question around um, mentoring and who those are and Daniel's just answered with it's a mix of artists from the first cohort and also exactly that other industry professionals other colleagues from the sector who again through that like informal mentoring you build relationships and networks and employment opportunities basically. Do you want to give an example of um, some of the um, visitors that we had last year just a quick yeah, just Daniel, a quick do idea the range yeah uh, absolutely. Um, so they, some of them may be returning, some of them not. Um, we had um, a poet, um, R.G. Manuel Polai, who um, works across lots of different creative health settings, who was supporting the group at the beginning of the training to reflect on, you know, where are we at now? What are the skills that we're bringing into this sector? What are the skills that we're missing? Um, and where do we want to be going over the next couple of years? We had um, Roshmi Lovett, who is um, an art therapist who does lots of embodied work, who was supporting the group to think about how do we um, take care of ourselves in the work that we're doing? How do we recognize when we are um, stressed, triggered, overwhelmed um, through no fault of our own, but perhaps working in challenging and in demanding environments? And what are the tools um, and resources that we have in place in order to um, do some of that work to make sure that we stay well in the work that we we do. Um, we had Dr. Errol Francis, who was talking about um, working across arts and mental health in lots and lots of different settings and thinking about some of the considerations in project design and delivery. Um, also communicating with lots of different partners who may have different vested interests. So it's a real mix of, um, you know, people who have an arts practice that are working across the sector in lots of ways. And then people like Roshmi who are working with artists in a sort of supervision um, capacity and supporting artists to think about um, how do they manage their own self-care. So it's, it's a real mix of sessions to cater for the mix of needs that no doubt the cohort will have. Wow, thank you, Daniel. Um, yeah, um, just picking up on Melissa's mm -hmm. message. Um, if it's in terms of a mix of ages, um, when you're going on placement, then yes, that's certainly something that we um, aim to do. Um, 
So we did in the um, last cohort, we had young people, adults of all ages, basically from four years old to 30 year olds to 65 year olds, you'll get a mixed bag of that. And we'll certainly be working towards making sure um, similarly, there's a mix of ages and also um, sort of health, health conditions that they might be dealing with basically as well. But again, um, there is a need to be flexible with the placements because there might be opportunities that might not be aligned with our own timeline of delivery and depending on the subject group in in question the placement group in question um, there might be things unrelated to the group itself but just logistical considerations of um, the setting that means that something that was agreed on might have to change but um, yeah, there'll, there'll be lots of variety and they will certainly be working to uh, make sure that we provide, offer that diversity. Wow, thanks, Sasha. We've just got sort of 10, 15 minutes left. I don't know if anybody has any further questions. There was a question in the chat um, just to me about um, in, in applying, do we have to have in mind an ethnically diverse group that we might want to work with, for example, with our seed money or in our practice? And the answer is no. We just ask that you as an applicant are ethnically diverse. Um, just to clarify that. Um, Inna, hi, you've got your hand up. <laughs> you got a question for us. Fantastic. You just come off me. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hello, Emma, Daniel, Sasha, and Rusty. Nice to see you all. Uh, can you hear me? Well, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I just want to ask the question about the application submission. Uh, I see that we can like submit through video. I just want to know if, if there is any rules about the video submission. Like it, it's not like the length of it or yeah. is it only to be like an edited video or something or one take thing? And then yeah. also about the, yeah, also about the DBS and the public liability. Do we need to have this ready before we apply or is it for the placement? Yeah, for the, for placement. the placements. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, and the video in our terms and conditions, I think we specify it's kind of no longer than five minutes and we're not looking for anything fancy. We just want you to answer the questions in the form. So if you feel like um, you can better do that in a video format, that's absolutely fine. And just we transfer it to us basically. Does that, does that answer your questions? And yes, DBS and public liability. Like lots of people often just have um, that, um, particularly public liability. Obviously DBS, sometimes it's very like um, organizationally specific, um, but we do have some budget to support the cohort with, um, you know, making sure they've got the right paperwork, the right risk assessments and stuff in place. And the project manager will help you with that. But some people kind of have some of those things in place and, and that's acceptable to the placement host. So um, you don't need to have those in place when applying though. So don't worry. Um, someone else has got their hand up. If you want to ask your question, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi. Hi. Um, just a question about like, if you um work in like multiple sort of health settings, um, say with like in schools doing sexual health stuff, and then with um young carers and sort of thinking about isolation and mental health, um, and then people experiencing houselessness like it's it's sort of different things is that would you rather us pick one for the application do you know what I mean and be more streamlined about that or yeah because I don't I don't want to seem like over overly confused about like which one I would want to focus on do you know what I mean yeah, I think that's such a good question. I think often as freelance workers, we do do lots of different things and that's really normal and really okay. So I think it's just answer the questions in the best way that you can. But that sounds to me like you've got a really brilliant practice that's really versatile and really flexible. So um, it might be that for you, the training um, might be a place to kind of focus in on one of those or develop one of those areas. So I think just answer in, you know, in plain English in the best way that you can, but you know, it absolutely sounds like your practice is really in the Venn diagram of like what this could be. So we really welcome that. 
Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Daniel. Daniel's just kind of put the, the video option, video and audio option. Um, fantastic. Are there any more questions or queries? What we'll do is put the recording um, onto the web page. So I hope that's okay with everyone, but I think it's these are things are always really useful for other people applying. Um, so we really value your questions. So it's really helpful for us to clarify what this is and what it isn't as well. Daniel, Sasha, I don't know if you've got any like closing thoughts or comments. <laughs> Not really, but just uh, other than to, to say thank you for joining us today and yeah, get your applications in. I'm quite excited to, to see who applies. I mean, it is a fabulous opportunity. Um, it's very rare that you do get paid to actually attend a, 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 a development programme um, of your own benefit. So, and yeah, it's Thank you for coming. Just echoing the same sentiments, you know, really excited to work on this project. And it was really wonderful to, you know, to see people flourish from the first cohort um, and taking their practice in different directions and getting space, time and space to be with one another, but also getting that practical support. Um, so get, get the applications in. <laughs> and Melissa says, what's the date when, when we start? Um, all the dates are over on the website. The first session, which is an online session, is on the 13th of January. Um, and then the last session, it runs until the 14th of July. But that's only the particular training dates. Um, obviously, your placements will be around that. And Sasha and the project manager will help you um, with, with figuring that out. Just as a guide, last um, the last year we did it roughly June and July, some fell into August. So it's around that time and we do try and be flexible, but obviously there's there's a range where it's it's best to undertake those placements. But yeah, June to August is what was typical last year of when those placements took place. Fantastic, thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for all these brilliant questions. Um, if anyone has anything else, um, what I'll do is I kind of do a soft close. So if you if you want, I'll gift you back nine minutes, eight minutes of time this afternoon. And thank you so much to everyone for attending. We will share this recording. Um, and uh, oh, thank you. Yep, you're really, really welcome. All the brilliant comments in the chat. And just let us know basically info at londonartsandhealth.org.uk and we can help with any application queries. And we wish everyone the best of luck and hopefully meet some of you in December for our in-person workshop uh, with the team. And have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Lenny. I've just seen your comment in the chat. Um, nope, that doesn't matter at all. Um, it sounds like you have, uh, you know, a really brilliant lived experience and you'd really be able to benefit from this training. So we really, really welcome um, anyone um, who, you know, particularly if you are experiencing mental health, like please do apply. Um, and no, it does not matter. I hope you feel welcome to apply and you can put an application in. So thank you for sharing that. Great. Fantastic. Have a have a nice afternoon. Thank you for coming.
All righty. There we go. <laughs> nice. Recording. Oh, uh, bear with me.